Yeah, it's incredible too. You can really love his videos mm. on that. Yeah, okay. It's just an interesting another way of doing it. So you're actually applying it real time with bricklayers, plumbers, housewives, prisons. It feels like the block is institutions and bureaucracies navigating through those to get to the other side. So I mean, it's bureaucratic that, budgets. Yeah, that, that, mm. yeah. Try to bring anything new in. Yeah. Mm. And he spent a lot of time in QUT. He knows both, he was a professor mm. at QUT, so mm. I mean, he knows bureaucracy and budgets um, very well. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm not saying anyone should do it, I'm just chucking it on a table as another way of doing it. So I'm not saying yes, no, good, bad, and different. I'm so passionate about it after being involved for a long while. But the thing is, we don't, we don't want to be pushed into a future that somebody else decides for us, do we? And that's saying that the key to future thinking, in my opinion, is it's got to be participative. It's got to be something that we get involved with in an action learning sense rather than have imposed on us. That's why it's not in the curriculum. Because, you know, everything is preordained by experts. Whereas I'm suggesting that future's thinking is something that demands participation. Mm. Which, our, which our society's not used to. Well, democracy demands participation, and yet a lot of people are apathetic and resent it. Mm. So if we can't actually get them that, how can we invigorate them for, you know, to incorporate futures? That's a challenge, but um, fortunately there's a bit more of it going on. Mm. I wouldn't give up. Tony, can you think of a, a situation where futures thinking has really changed a context for a group of people? I'm sure. Lots of, just lots of examples that we think. My mind hasn't been applied to this in the last few years. The Philippines, for instance, you've done a lot of work with Cezanne in the Philippines. I got quite inspired by talking to Philippines with you just before, um, well, May, and I was, I was echoing in what, while you were talking what Tony and Kathleen had been up to with Cezanne. Mm -hmm. That would be a, an, an example, yes? I'm just trying to think what um, keep talking about. No, okay. No, I'll, I'll, it'll come. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be hard to introduce any new subject, isn't mm -hmm. it, from the education point of view. Mm -hmm. But can we infuse it into other subjects, which is really what it should be done, what should be done with future thinking. Mm -hmm. I think it has to be taught as future studies, the study of the future or about the future. We can't predict the future. Any, anybody that comes to you and says that future studies is about prediction of the future, and they're talking through their head, because you can't predict the future. There are too many, too much of a complex cross flow of interactions, but we can have some effect by having our say in creating or co-creating the future. So, yeah. I think literature could be a way to start putting the ideas out there. Yeah. Story, like sci-fi stories or well, just other things. Fiction. Eh? Yeah, science fiction. Mm -hmm. and also, oh dear, this is, it must be my advancing years, but um, can just pick up it'll on come to me. Sorry, Tony, can I just pick up on something Terry's saying about the... the getting into the prison system. Mm. Um, I think, because uh, I work in social services, mm. and we actually, I work with Kikos, and we last, uh, six months ago, put in a big two Morella, which is a new uh, correctional, well, it's actually three opening of an old correctional mm. centre, but with focus on 18 to 24 year olds, mm. and moving moving young fellows through fast, and having industry actually on the side, mm. and having employee, you know, rather than social service system and employers mm. meet people at the gate, actually being inside. Mm. And anyway, we put forward a futures-based um, process that was mm. basically work with the workforce mm. so that then they worked, they, they did planning with the young young folk in a way mm. that was very futures-oriented. We didn't get up, we got through two rounds of the tender and didn't ultimately get up, but they loved it. But there's something, there's a real opportunity, like I think there's a real shift at the moment a lot of us who work in 
areas of poverty and disadvantage, mm. recognise that we who work in the field have actively perpetuated negative images of the future to get leverage for change. Mm. And that we've done such a disservice to the people. We've made them, we've made the people we work with and for feel like they have a closed future. Mm. And we've done, we've been really successful at that. Mm. And it's showing up now in the NDIS work, which Steve's mm. been doing quite a bit of. Um, somehow, we've got to find a way to shift that. Because now that there's reform, you talk to people, you talk to their families, and their eyes glaze over. Mm. Because, you know... Probably a good segue then. So, Tony, as I was saying about your work in action learning and participatory research, if you had to, now reflecting on your life's work and scholarship, what's worked for you? I think about that one. Uh, it's a tough question. I might be able to do it before we finish. I think that I think that the value of future thinking to me is that you're not you're not forecasting or predicting because we can't predict accurately. It's a matter of saying what are some of our visions and it's bring vision into the thinking and working. There is some vision, some people are visionary, and they bring it with them. But most of us sit there and do what we're told to somebody else's prescribed future. And that to me is the most interesting part of it. It's the fact that you can imagine and try new things and have a vision, because that's what's missing, I think, in our governments at the moment. So equally, Tony, what hasn't worked in your experiences? What hasn't worked about yeah, that. in terms of the future's experience and research and scholarship. Well, I think that I'm probably uh, biased in that I would have liked it. I'd like to see more futures thinking, future studies, whatever you want, want to call it, mm. in our in our university or our education systems. It's still not there. It's very hard. To, very hard. The 1990s to one died very very quickly. And then, getting back to your point, we we have quite a robust education school here, and they, they don't even know how to spell futures. And that's what concerns me, is that at the highest level, and yeah, I'm quoting this. straight from the national yeah. curriculum, but they've embedded futures with two other key um, strands, I guess you call them, key concepts, systems thinking, worldviews, and futures. As they see them as the vehicles of sustainability, and I wonder if there's actually more futures thinking happening under different language and, and a banner of perhaps sustainability. I, I maintain this happening in terms of uh, in terms of um, not 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 creating a vision, but being pushed into somebody else's future. Because I see. Um, you know that saying you see all the time, you know, the future is here but it's just not evenly distributed, that That's concept, fine. the comment that you just made, that we've convinced the certain, a certain segment of the community that there is no future and they have no agency mm. to, in, in an attempt to actually get the funding they need to give them agency in a broader future. Mm. So, but at the other end, I also... Um, I work as a researcher in STEM and the arts and, and entrepreneurship education. STEM is science, science technology. technology, engineering, math. So I'm involved with the geek end of town, and I see kids who are in, uh, nine years old who are writing apps, yeah. girls, mm. <laughs> um, who, yeah. who believe they can change the world, yeah. that, that there's, there's another end of that conversation but it's tied to privilege. These are wealthy kids coming from affluent schools, often out of the mainstream sector, more in the private sector, but not always, who have a belief that not only can they change the world, that they must change the world, that, it's, that, that the adults around have screwed things up and it's up to them hmm. to really look after So. There's, there's a, a digital divide in the community as well. But, but I see so much hope and so much agency in these kids. And 
And I mean, it's uplifting to see them when they get up and present in a competition, you know, that's, that's disguised as, um, as programming. Yeah, they're beautiful. But, but they're amazing, just yeah. amazing. It's in very good hands. Absolutely. And, and I think some of the things they're doing for that end of town, those kids can hold the future for everyone in their hands because they do think differently. They, they think they, they know they have power. They know they have agency and they're willing to do things about it. And very fortunately for them, they're all carrying one of these that has video on it because they can't possibly read the text but they can play the YouTube and they can listen to this podcast and they can get exposure to concepts and knowledge and skills far beyond their years through vision and voice that they can never access in the past through text. Mm -hmm. And that's the empowering tool. And to me, things like the NBN are vital to fight for and get rid of the copper because if we let those kids loose, I think they can create a sustainable systems oriented world view future. If threatening, we can to let adults, them. threatening to adults to see kids like that. So I'm just wondering <laughs> if we had some of those young people present here in this group, how would it be different if we gave them the space to speak? Because often they don't have the space to speak. That's right. And how, That's how would it be different? But we all sit back by the sound of it. That's Sorry. inspiring what you've just said. Just forget about us. It's going to yeah. leapfrog in yeah. the next generation by the sound of it. But it'd be good if we could come together, though. And it would be great. And, and I, integration. I absolutely I believe that. Kids to come in and give yeah. us a